G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It's time for another trade rumor update. I've been doing these about once a month and trying to collate all of the swirling trade rumors that are going on at the moment. As we get a little bit closer to the trade period, obviously these rumors are gonna heat up and I'm gonna be making more regular videos of this nature. So if that's something you wanna see, make sure you hit subscribe to this channel for more trade updates. So what I've done is collate you know, a heap of rumors that are out there at the moment. I do wanna clarify one thing though. I am not a journalist. I'm not breaking stories here. I did remember seeing some Facebook page credit me with a story of Riley Bonner to North Melbourne last year, which didn't even turn out right, um, which was obviously fake news. I didn't even say that in a video. But anyway, I'm just going to pass on what is being said out there. So to start off, we'll talk about a player that had previously been linked to potentially moving clubs that has re-signed with his club, and that is Ben Ainsworth, and that's happened very recently as far as I can tell. This is a big win for the Gold Coast Suns, I think. I think Ainsworth is an underrated player and obviously speaks as well to improve retention. As Gold Coast have improved as a side, their retention has gotten better. What an absolute shock. So Ainsworth says he weighed up rival offers and has signed a four-year deal to stay with the Gold Coast Suns, which I think is the right move for his career considering what I believe is an upward trajectory for the Gold Coast Suns. So we'll start off with that. He's not going anywhere, and we'll move on to some other players where we don't have any defin definitive answers on. So a new one is Dan Houston from Port Adelaide. Now, I actually thought Dan Houston was South Australian. It turns out he's Victorian, and it says Melbourne are among the Victorian powerhouses linked to Houston. He was drafted out of the Oakley Chargers back in 2015 and has played 163 games for the, uh, for the power. And yeah, absolute gun. So this has kind of come out of nowhere, and not least because he signed a contract at the start of 2022, that signed him until the end of 2027. So this is not only a contracted player, a heavily contracted player. And therefore, uh, you know, if any club talked him out of wanting to leave Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide would have to agree to it and would also hold all the bargaining power in terms of a trade because he, of course, wouldn't be a free agent. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I'm passing on what was said on SEN, The Run Home, by Kim Dillon. And he suggested that after making a few calls, he believes that this might actually be Houston driven and that he's actually pretty open to moving back to Victoria. So this will be an intriguing situation because I think where Port Adelaide's at the moment, naturally they'll still be seeing themselves in a premiership window for a long while yet. When you've got Rosie, Butters, Horn Francis as your core, Houston's still 26, maybe turning 27 this year. And I imagine a really required player for Port Adelaide. So I don't know what to make of this. If Houston really stamps his feet up and down saying he wants to leave, maybe they negotiate a trade, but I really don't think there's gonna to be too much luck there. But let me know in the comments what you think about that one. There has also been some fresh reports around Clayton Oliver. So if you remember the end of last year, there was a bit of a bombshell um, news story that Oliver was potentially going to request a trade out of Melbourne or at least Melbourne was shopping him. It was one of those two. Obviously there was a bit of uh, tension in the relationship between Oliver and the Demons and Adelaide was named as a, well, the, arguably the biggest suitor for him, or at least the club the most keen. Obviously that didn't eventuate, Oliver stuck fat with the Melbourne Footy Club, but it says there is frustration and tension building between Melbourne and Clayton Oliver. And this is coming from Sam McClure. So again, take this with a grain of salt. They're not gonna pick him, Mitch. So McClure says, quoting, I think he's clearly up for grabs if he's gonna leave Melbourne, which is an if at this stage, it will be to the Adelaide Crows. And that kind of makes sense, adding a little bit of a diversification to their midfield, a bigger bodied, powerful inside midfielder, I think adds something that they don't have. So I completely understand why Adelaide, given where they're at as well, would be interested in a player like Clayton Oliver. He says, Adelaide have made it very clear to the rest of the competition that their first pick is up for grabs. That's interesting. I hadn't actually come across that before, but again, it makes sense. I think where they're at, they don't really necessarily need to be investing in the draft. And Melbourne might have one eye on the draft, to be honest. So that I could see their first pick being very tempting for the demons here. There's frustration and tension building between the two parties. McClure says. Oliver is frustrated about starting on the bench lately, the new role he's been given, and he doesn't think he's been utilized in the best way he can. And I suppose when you consider he's on $1.1 million a season for the next six years, it doesn't really add up, does it? But we know that Oliver's coming from a, a little bit of a way back. So I think there's something to this. We could see this happen again. The story broke at the end of last year. Now it's resurfacing. There could be something to this and uh, it could end up in Melbourne's favor. I think they'll be looking, you know, at the top end of this draft. And I think they've taken some really good picks in the last few years. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what moves they do here. Of course, they have to agree to it. And some juicy midfielders at the top end of this draft as well. A couple of Eagles players to touch base on now. So there's Tom Barras, first of all. This story doesn't go away. Like it, it goes away and then it comes back every few weeks. So this is from Tom Morris very recently. He believes that this situation is flipping and flopping. And uh, that makes sense based on what I just said. But he thinks the Adam Simpson departure increases the chances that he stays. Interesting. It kind of implies that he would be more likely to leave if Adam Simpson was still there. Hey guys, just a quick note to let you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. You know, since I got back to the UK, 
I've been thinking a lot about mental health. Personally had a lot on my mind and it's got me thinking a lot about how this specific lifestyle that I choose where I'm very dedicated to making content, etc. right now, the unfortunate byproduct of that is that it's made me feel very socially isolated. And that can be difficult when you have a lot on your mind. And you know, some people might be able to relate to that. And for others, they might not feel socially isolated as such. They might be surrounded by loved ones. They might be surrounded by friends, but you know, sometimes people just don't wanna feel like a burden if they wanna to talk to people about the way they're feeling. I think there is a lot to be said for being able to verbalize the way that you're feeling. Sometimes it's not even just about problem solving the issues that you have in your life. Sometimes it's just about getting that negative energy that you have inside of you out of you. This is where therapy in general, but BetterHelp specifically, can come in and add a lot of value to your life. It's basically a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. If you want to check out more info, check out the link in the description of this video and the pinned comment, or go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. You'll fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs. Then they'll match you with a therapist with years of experience at helping people just like you. And usually you will get matched with a therapist within 48 hours. And then scheduling your sessions is really easy. You can do it by a phone call, you can do it by a video chat, whatever is the most convenient for you. It is literally the most convenient way to seek therapy. Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can help you today. And if you use my link, like I said, betterhelp.com forward slash true footy, you will enjoy a special discount on your first month as well. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. It's just a waiting game at the moment. Of course, West Coast can hold on to him. Again, another contracted player that we're talking about here. He's got three years remaining on the deal. But the Western Bulldogs are still very interested. They'd be willing to offer at least two more seasons on top of that. So the incentive there for Barras is very clear. Go to a team that's potentially going to contend, potentially as soon as next year. Uh, get a little bit of extra time on that contract. West Coast with where they're at the, at the moment. Obviously, he's probably not going to see success much for the rest of his career at the Eagles. And while he might be established in Perth, I can see why he'd want to leave. And I've probably, as a West Coast fan, been you know anti-trading away Barras. But as the season has become more and more depressing... If there is a way that we can get draft picks out of this situation, I will absolutely live with it. I've previously said the Bulldogs probably don't have much to offer West Coast. The only reason West Coast would do this deal is if they can get some decent draft compensation. Maybe this relies on what the Bulldogs get for Bailey Smith. We'll see. There's another eagle uh, that has been talked about more recently, and that's Jake Waterman, who's obviously having an amazing season and might be the most improved player in the competition considering how far back he was last year. So two Victorian powerhouses are courting Eagles forward Jake Waterman, according to John Ralph of the Herald Sun. Those two clubs are Melbourne and Geelong. Now, Waterman is not a free agent. He's contracted, probably underpaid at the moment, and apparently keen to stay at West Coast. He is a local boy. So you'd imagine if Melbourne, you know, if we're, if we're assuming all of this happens, which it probably won't, but let's assume that it does. If Melbourne do give up Clayton Oliver, get a handy pick, could they flip that for Jake Waterman? It's interesting how it all connects. And also Geelong being interested as well, given they have to trade something for them, is this a contingency for Bailey Smith? If they miss out on Bailey Smith, do they go for Jake Waterman? Who knows? But both clubs probably need a key forward in their prime. Melbourne probably more immediately and Geelong probably thinking about life after Hawkins, which I suppose is relatively immediate if he retires at the end of this season. But Ralph says he's on about $440,000 a year at West Coast, roughly, and he thinks that's going to double. That makes sense. Waterman is having an outstanding year. We can touch base on Liam Baker as well. This one's been talked about all year. Uh, particularly in the West Australian media because he is linked to a move home to Western Australia. But we've got a slight update. The last time we heard it reported on, it was leaning towards West Coast. But the latest update from Cal Toomey is that he has met with a couple of Fremantle dockers in Caleb Sarong and Andrew Brayshaw, which at least implies that he's still open to a move to Fremantle. And this one could be a moving situation, I think. The more West Coast turn to shit this year, the more I think they'll be unwilling to part with picks for Liam Baker. It's, it's hard to get a read on that, but Liam Baker, you can understand, would consider playing for a contender in Fremantle. It seems like his preference has always been West Coast, but obviously the, the chance for some immediate success, and he's going to get pay, well paid at either club. He's at least hearing Fremantle out, so uh, I suppose there's going to be plenty to play out. Uh, on this particular situation. And I've talked about how I don't know how the Eagles get this done without trading down pick three, which is a little bit stinky. On the topic of Richmond, however, we do have a little bit of a snippet from Sam McClure. Again, grain of salt, talking about Dusty Martin. And this one, I think he was talking about it on Footy Classified. And he's more or less suggesting that Dusty has just checked out of Richmond. So he says he's been injured, granted personal leave at the start of last week to go to New Zealand. Talks about how he got on a flight for four hours and then played a round of golf when he's supposed to be injured. I don't know, read into that what you want. But McClure sort of claims to have some sources close to the action. He says Richmond would love to, him to play at least one more time and have a farewell game for the Tigers. Speaking to people close to Dustin Martin, speaking to people at Richmond and speaking to people at Gold Coast, all Sam McClure's words, 
he won't play at punt road beyond this season. So that's probably the strongest indication yet that Dusty Martin would consider going to the Gold Coast Suns at the end of this year. It seems like it'll be Gold Coast if anyone, right? A little bit of an update on a couple of GWS boys. Harry Perryman and Isaac Cumming are still out of contract. We do have a bit of an update on Harry Perryman. And apparently, according to Caroline Wilson, again, the Hawks have offered a five-year deal worth around $800,000 a season. So the Hawks going hard at the free agency market. And you'd imagine, you know, is this in addition to a Bailey Smith thing? Uh, it'll be interesting to see the flow on effect of which club Bailey Smith chooses as to the other moves that happen around. So according to Caroline Wilson, the Hawthorne vice captain Dylan Moore was part of a contingent that performed a raid into Sydney last week. I don't know what that means. Does that mean they just met with Harry Perryman in Sydney? It says it was led by Sam Mitchell and their free agency man, Jared Roughhead. I wasn't aware that there was a specific free agency role. I kind of thought that was just like a list manager. But anyway, what we glean from this, if you choose to believe it, is that Hawthorne are going hard for Perryman and at least one of the two Adelaide clubs, that's a quote, are going for him as well as Essendon. Then John Ralph actually clarifies it's Port Adelaide going for him. So we got Hawthorne, Port Adelaide, and Essendon. And he also throws the Swans in there. So this will be an interesting watch. The later we get into the season and Perriman hasn't signed, the intrigue will continue to increase. There's also Isaac Cumming, who I think is also a quality player that could potentially find a new home, another free agent out of contract. He has been linked to Adelaide, Port Adelaide, Fremantle, and now Melbourne. I'm unfamiliar with what they are, but the article suggests that he has links to South Australia and he's been holding off contract talks until such a point that he was over some niggling injuries he's had, which kind of makes sense. We do see that fairly consistently, although we are getting fairly deep into the season now. I'm not sure if this is a money issue. You'd imagine both of these players will probably take pay rises to go to other clubs or at least be offered pay rises, however. But uh, this will be an interesting one here because I think both of them are really good players. There's also a little bit about Western Bulldogs out of contract midfielder Riley Garcia, who was 23. I didn't realize that. I feel like he was drafted just yesterday. But he's a, he's a player that's come in and played for the Bulldogs at times this year and looked quite good at AFL level and then gone back to the VFL and the other day, he had 34 disposals, 10 clearances, 17 tackles, and two goals. This kid, he's not a kid anymore. He's a kid to me. I'm 30. I can say what I want. But he's averaged 32 disposals and eight clearances this year and just can't get a game at the Western Bulldogs. Now, he has been linked to both Port Adelaide and West Coast. Being a West Australian boy, I think West Coast is just, you know, they're going to come up a lot in my trade updates, and it's not because I'm looking for Eagles rumors. It's just I think the West Coast Eagles are very desperate right now. I did also see, this is a big footy rumor, Bear in mind, big footy rumor that Riley Garcia was caught touring the facilities at Geelong, and that's why he can't get a game of the Western Bulldogs. I just thought I'd pass that on. But it does seem like a player that is good enough to play AFL, not quite getting the opportunity at his original club, that might find his way to another list. Bit of an update as well on Josh Battle. Tom Morris very recently saying that uh, the Hawks are massively into Josh Battle. So again, we're seeing the same sorts of teams pop up. Both Adelaide clubs are being pro very proactive. Hawthorne are into everyone. Collingwood as well, I think, have been linked to Josh Battle and I think would be a really good signing for them and Hawthorne too. And we also talk about Fremantle and West Coast for different reasons are super active at the moment. West Coast trying to avoid continuing to be a little far team and Fremantle generally trying to top up. So Josh Battle apparently is on about $400,000 a year this year and is getting offers of around $900,000. So Hawthorne, again, I've talked about this before, probably needing a little bit of reinforcement down back. And Collingwood, you know, this is a horrendous outcome this season for them. And without the draft position, they don't have a good draft position this year. They're probably going to have to look at free agency. So I'd expect them to also go hard for Josh Battle. But I suppose the update there is that Hawthorne are probably going the hardest at the moment. Also a little bit on Tim English. Again, forgive the West Coast rumor, but Tim English is still unsigned to the Western Bulldogs, which is a little bit curious because the way I read this situation was that Tim English was probably going to stay. But it appears that the Bulldogs have offered him a reasonable offer of about five years and West Coast is six years. It's just not as lucrative financially, quoting Tom Morris. It's not as lucrative financially as maybe he'd hoped. But it seems like West Coast is still definitely having a sniff at Tim English. So to summarize, according to Morris, the Dogs have a five-year contract offer for Tim English. West Coast have six. And to quote, he can leave if he wants. And I think that looks more likely now than staying. That's a quote from Tom Morris. And he also says that that contract offer is unlikely to shift from the Western Bulldogs given Luke Beveridge's views on Ruckman. Interesting stuff. Also a little bit of an update that Daniel Rioli is reportedly off the trade table. There was previously speculation uh, that I've passed on on this channel before that he might end up at the Gold Coast Suns. But apparently 
Richmond are going to commit to him. So it says the Suns have been circling the 27-year-old who's contracted at the Tigers until the end of 2027. And apparently the Suns were willing to offer two first-round picks for him. This is just me quoting. According to Fox Footy's midweek tackle, and I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of that in my life. But he basically says that Rioli's relationship to Morris, who's still there, is, is the complicating factor in this. So going from that, Daniel Rioli is unlikely to find his way to the Gold Coast Suns at the end of this year. Just a point on Dylan Shield. Apparently St. Kilda have renewed their interests um, he's still got a year left at Essendon. He's been dealing with injuries, uh, which seems to be a common thing with Dylan Shiel. But he had a pretty good game against Melbourne the other day. And apparently there's just St. Kilda's lurking and interestingly want to take a 30-year-old midfielder, which I think is a bit interesting for their list position. I'd imagine he would go fairly cheap given his age and probably on some decent money as well at Essendon and maybe not a required player there. So that I can see how this deal would get done. But I'm just thinking St. Kilda who have... You know, got a lot of young talent at the moment and are underperforming as a team. I feel like this is a curious move, but regardless, the update there is St. Kilda are still keen on Dylan Shield. And finally, we'll cap off this video with one last little update about another player that West Coast is chasing. So this is uh, Carlton's Jack Carroll, who seems to be a decent, promising young midfielder out of uh, East from Mantle, I think, originally. Probably can't crack a game into a very good team. So he's played 11 games this year for Carlton, but probably doesn't have any real job security. So you can understand why West Coast is trying to just turn over their list completely and is looking for undervalued players at other clubs. Now, just to clarify, there's actually nothing in what Cal Toomey says here that suggests that Jack Carroll is looking to leave Carlton, just that West Coast are interested and he's out of contract. You imagine he gets some better game time at the West Coast Eagles. So for now, that's all we got for the trade update, guys. Let me know in the comments anything that I miss or any particular thoughts you have on the things we discussed in this video. But for now, I'll thank you for watching. I'll thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.